water runoff patterns that we see, like you know, whenever there is heavy rain, nearly 50% of water gets runoff. So if we kind of start with, let's say, the roads, now there is this permeable roads that soak rainwater. Like for example, here in this uh, in, in the photo, what you are seeing, it can soak up to 4,000 liters of water in one hour. That's like you know, big tanker getting soaked in one hour the entire road. So, I mean, when we build the roads, at least the main, the trunk roads where you have the maximum amount of track, whether in Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bangalore, if we can start building these roads where you have these uh, polyurethane binders combined with gravel and stone to create a surface similar to a tar road, but can absorb the water quickly. I mean, that is going to like, you know, uh, solve this water logging problem, traffic problem. Imagine the kind of like, you know, inconvenience, the traffic uh, problems that people are facing with this, you know, what huge water logging on the roads. So start with the main roads. And I think the cost wise also like, you know, if you take a one kilometer cement road, it costs you, I think around uh, 15 to 20 lakhs. So this must not cost that much, that high. It's not a little bit higher, but you know, that tangible, intangible benefits, I think it's worth uh, uh, using this technology. So the roads, I think this is because we have a lot of traffic. I think these cities need immediate attention to test these new technology roads where water gets soaked, absorbed, and water logging doesn't happen. This needs to be tested. So this is the one, one of the techniques in the spawn city. Next is the green building. This concept, I think, is... Uh, growing, picking up very fast. I mean, recently I have uh, attended one of the green buildings exhibition. And I would say like more than, uh, uh, I would say more than 90%, everybody's advertising like, you know, uh, green roofs, uh, green facades. So a lot of this, uh, you know, green buildings concept is picking up and uh, we are going to see much more demand going forward about these green buildings, green rooftops. And the reason is very clear, right? The reason is all these green buildings, they cut down your energy consumption by 20 to 30%, water usage by 40%. And obviously when you have that kind of like savings, your property value will go up. So clearly the rising of demand for these green homes has uh, definitely helped us to reduce the cost. Earlier it used to be like you know, 15 to 20% higher cost than the conventional homes. But now I think like at least in the tier one uh, cities, metro cities, the cost is not more than 5%. Uh, so obviously it's affordable. Uh, in tier two, tier three is still a little higher, but I think uh, given the uh, benefits uh, in terms of like, you know, cooling, less water usage, uh, it is really, really beneficial that uh, we move towards uh, going for the green buildings. And uh, also they have like, you know, various certifications like, you know, platinum, gold, silver rated buildings, which will assess you, which will benchmark you in terms of like where your building stands in terms of like, you know, uh, renewable energy usage, water usage, water recycling, uh, waste recycling. So that will help you like uh, to kind of like uh, cut down your uh, uh, electricity bill, uh, wastage bill. And also going forward, going forward, I think if we can have this carbon credit market taking off, then definitely these buildings are eligible to get some kind of a carbon credit also. So that will also help you to create a new revenue stream. So uh, this is already popular. I think like, you know, every city is, having this kind of a, like, you know, green buildings. Now, uh, the next thing is these, uh, you know, bio-retention swales. The swales, basically, uh, you have buildings, you have roads. Now, in between these roads, if we have some kind of a, like, an, a slope where then there is a heavy rain, if we can, like, you know, save the water in these swales, that would be really beneficial rather than like you know driving the water, draining the water away from the from your place. So this is another technique. So these are wet or wet or dry made of rocks, grass to move water efficiently along the slopes. So this is another uh, technique near the houses which everybody can implement. 
in this slide we are talking about like you know three type system for these pond cities one is in the mild rain second moderate rain and third is intensive rain if it's a mild rain you have these green buildings which will absorb all the rain water that is the micro system if you have a moderate rain then at the community level if you have parks if you have like you know gardens here where we have kind of a small ponds or underground tanks or uh, rain rainwater harvesting pits that will help but if you have a you know heavy high intensity rainfall that's what we are observing recently uh we are seeing like you know high intensity rainfall where like earlier the entire yearly rainfall we are seeing them in a very few days high intensity heavy rainfall then we definitely need a, a macro system the urban system where we have the wetlands lakes ponds so that <clears throat> all the he heavy rain water we can kind of collect them in this uh, macro system urban system so these are the lakes ponds tanks that the city is built now we need to understand like you know okay uh, at at the uh, micro level green buildings yes we can kind of like you know as a citizens we will opt for them for the moderate rain we need like you know the rain gardens underground tanks that also i think the local community cities can build but at the macro level this is where the city administration should step in here or creating these wet wetlands creating those lakes ponds it is the job of the uh, city administration and the states 